there. Make everyone like that. That was in, about a foot in from the baseline. About this high over the net, a lot of spin, that's beautiful. All right guys, Trey from Winners Only Tennis back. The road to 4.5 continues. Today we are working with my friend and former ATP pro, Kev. This is a really good one, guys, I think for anyone at any tennis level. We start with a playing lesson, then get into the more technical weeds in the second session. And there's tons of good tidbits of information here. So let me know what you think in the comments. As always, subscribe. We've got more videos coming. I'm gonna continue to get better. And the videos hopefully will continue to improve as well. In our playing lesson, Keb started serving to see how my return was. And even though this guy hasn't served in five years, I still got absolutely torched and embarrassed. This identified that returns is something that we're definitely going to need to work on. I then started to get to serve some points and while I still got dominated, I was able to actually get into some points. Um, Kev wasn't trying nearly as hard as he could. Um, was kind of letting me get into some points to see where I was at. Um, but I served well and was able to hit some decent shots. I've also really been struggling to make first serves lately, so Keb suggested that I really make that an emphasis as we started to play another game. Well, I want you to serve one more, okay. and I want you to try to get more first serves in. Okay. Start the point. I know you can serve better than that, but that's how you start games. Yeah. You get, get a good one in and set a good tone. So it's clear that there's a lot of things to work on in my point play, particularly footwork, my willingness to go for the backhand, and honestly just playing smarter points and not going for it as often. Um, a lot of times my big misses are when I really go for it. Um, and when I have a smooth, relaxed swing and just stay loose, I play a lot better. Keb then served at half speed and I actually got to get into some points and have some fun. My backhand, while still not great, is it's improving. It's improving. Good point. Thanks. To cap off the evening, we played baseline games and Keb was really just trying to hit the ball deep and keep it in and force me to keep it in as well. Um, I was having to pick my spots of when to go for it, but really the objective here was to play the point and keep the ball in play for as long as possible. Good shot. We were able to take what we learned about my game here and bring it into the next lesson where we finally got into more of the technical weeds that we hadn't really touched on yet. you notice when we played our baseline games the other day that I hit a lot of balls kind of just high deep cross court it took you a little bit took you a game or so before you kind of figured that out and started slowing it down and working the ball yeah. but once you did you realize like tennis you're gonna have to make a lot of balls nobody wants to play somebody who's gonna grind and make a ton of balls yeah, it it's you're looking up a hill and you're yeah. like shit I have to climb this hill my philosophy was always if I can out rally him a couple of times from the beginning early on, he'll realize that shit ain't gonna work, right? And he doesn't know, he should keep it up because I don't want to face that, right? right? But it's just kind of my little thing to try to send the message early. Sometimes you're kind of stuck in your normal spot behind the baseline. Point is that there's different trajectories that the ball is coming at. And you and a lot of people, when they learn their forehand, the ball's fed to them, normal ball kind of coming straight. That doesn't help you much when the ball is high 
bouncing and coming up off the court. You gotta learn how to do what they call level out the swing. And you're gonna do your basic backswing and everything, but you're gonna do it up a little bit because you're gonna try to hit downward on the ball. You want to keep your mechanics. You wanna keep your posture and your head straight. So that's why you try to head, catch them here. And then if they go a little higher, sometimes people lean a little and you can get away with a little bit of it, no big deal. But, mm -hmm. but you don't wanna be doing some kind of weird thing where you core and technique are failing you. The tendency for most people is to continue to have a drop. And then this has to happen. Right. We want to eliminate that. If you draw a circle, you're basically stopping it and bringing the racket through. Good. You can let these sit a little if you need to. There you go. Okay. When you do your circle, you're here and then you have this waiting period. Move around the ball with the circle all as one big unit. So you gotta slow this part down. Sit, get around it, good. Get f so far around it that when you hit it, you're turning back into the ball. You never wanna get jammed or run into it. You wanna turn into it. There's a solid hit. I actually kind of am pretty light with my arm. I feel like I'm hitting it kind of like with here okay. and with here. If I'm gonna go inside in, I break it and come around. If I'm gonna go inside out, I just leave it back a little longer so it kind of tails off. When you hit, your body's actually moving from being balanced to forward. I want you to be down and rotate. There you go. That one was very nice. Hit. Okay. So that one, you didn't actually swing that hard, but it went a little harder. But your weight. It was connected, it, was, it had that stay sideways a little longer if you can. There, that's the one. Again, you're gonna hit from on the outside of the ball from low to high. Low to high on the outside of the ball. You gotta get underneath the outside edge of the ball. Good, that's the right spin. Make everyone like that. It should be for, you should be hitting with your hands out here more. Okay, you're kind of hitting back in here, but you're doing it by opening up, okay? We want you to be turned as the swing comes through, then your body comes around, okay? And this back heel, this can come up off the ground and rotate. We want extra height. I want you to hit them 10 feet over the net. That's about five feet. Good, see if you can do that again and get it over the net still. Or get it over the net. Good, again. Okay, I'm gonna show you the difference. This is the way you did it. Okay, this is the way I'm gonna do it. Okay. See the difference? Staying down a little Kinda bit. Kind of staying down and sideways a little bit more. Good, you have to use your core to do this. It's less hands, more turn. There, that's it. Keep that racket moving. Circled. That was in, about a foot in from the baseline. Okay. About this high over the net, a lot of spin. That's beautiful. For returns, you wanna cut the ball off because you don't want it to what they call play you. So the trick is basically do your forehand and your backhand. You're doing like less than half swing. You're basically, your forehand normally is gonna be like this. Your, back, your return is gonna be like that. Okay. But because it's just that really, but I'm turned, right. so it's like this. And you're trying to just get the strings on the ball. Returns are critical to winning matches. Right. And in order to make a lot of returns, you have to concentrate and stay with it until the ball leaves your racket. Awesome. Uh. See how you jumped? If I hit him hard wide, boom, boom.
<laughs> How's that feel? Pretty good. Uh, too much. So, it just every it shows you that your instinct with how to take it back is too big, because it basically came back here and you never were able to recover on the hard one. So keep it tight. You kind of okay. what people have told me is keep your elbow in. Okay. This elbow can kind of keep the racket from getting behind you. That was awesome. All right, good. Let's call it. All right.